I'm showing you my favorite drills and we're going inside the numbers. Let's do this. It's time for Proving It, presented by Titleist. You hear about it all the time. The numbers. What do the numbers say? What do the numbers say? I want to talk to you about numbers. And specifically, I want to talk to you about one of the most important numbers in the game, and that is launch angle. Launch angle is an essential number for you to appreciate and understand because it's going to give you a degree of predictability. Now, what do I mean by launch angle? Come on up here. So as we come up here, what you can see is on my board, I've got two launch angles. I've got a horizontal launch and I've got a vertical launch. What we're really talking about right now is the vertical launch, how that ball is taking off away from the ground. And my six iron is typically going to be right around 18 degrees. So that's at 17.7. That's going to allow me to see some consistency in what I'm doing. So I hit that one and went about 180 yards. I'm like 175 to 180 with the six iron. Now, I want you to see what's going to happen. I'm going to alter my launch angle on this one. I'm going to get this one to launch up into the air a little bit higher. How? Well, I'm going to do it by altering my grip. So I'm going to take my grip. I'm going to make it much, much weaker. So the club face is going to be much more open. And as I open up that club face, I've added loft. And as I add loft, the launch angle should go up into the air. So I'm going to count for that by just aiming a little bit left here. But here we go. Club face open. Launch angle now coming. All right, now, come on up to the front. I want you to see what we have going on up here. First of all, remember our launch angle, I'm around 18. Well, that one there all of a sudden jumps up to 22 and a half. So what's the effect of 22 and a half? Well, we know when we open up that club face, that ball's gonna twist over to the right-hand side. So my side spin is gonna be R, 784 RPMs right, that's the R, to the right. Now. I know I'm going to get a right one because my club face is open. So I'm just kind of mastering the obvious right here. As I open up the club face, I'm going to get higher launch. I'm going to get some, some movement to the right-hand side. But what happens as a result? Well, one of the things that happens is my carry distance only goes 156 yards. I lost 20 yards by taking that club face and opening it up and trying to create a higher launch angle. Now, let's do the opposite. Let's try to get one where we launch this down a little bit lower. And the opposite would be true as well with what I do with the club face. So this time I'm gonna take the club face and instead of opening it up, I'm gonna close it a little bit. So I'm gonna put that into a closed position right there. And now when I hit this one, this is gonna have some, some L spin, but we're gonna notice what happens to the launch angle. So here we go. Now. That one takes off. That one is going way, way, way left. And it continues to have a lot of roll. Now, when we look up here at this number, what you can see is that carried about 190 yards. Not a great shot. A lot of left spin to that. But watch what happens to the launch angle. You see right down here, my launch angle now is 13.3 degrees. So if you look at those two shots, the blue one's the one that went to the right, that's the 156. The red one's the one that went to the left, that's the club face that's a little bit closed, launch angle changing. Now, why is that all important for you? Because that's one of the reasons why you're inconsistent with the predictability of the distance or the outcome of the shot, how it, how it reacts when it gets onto the green. Because you're not thinking about, well, how am I launching this ball? How do I get consistent with that strike to get my launch angle to be the same or nearly the same? It doesn't have to be 18 every time. It can be 16 sometimes or maybe even 17 sometimes. It can, it can have a little variance in there, but you can't get to where you have four degrees of difference in this. More than four degrees, you're going to get a tremendous uh, variance in the shot. Now, how do we, how do we control the launch angle. Well, the way we control the launch angle is you create a mock impact position. So here's my, here's my six iron position right here. That's what I'm kind of feeling like when I get into the ball. So I set my impact position, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back to that mocked position. Now that swing there, pretty good swing. 
Not quite exactly what I wanted, but let's come on up to the, to the front here and let's take a little peek at what we got. Remember, I'm like 175 to 180. There's 178, so that works out pretty well. And remember, I'm sort of, the, the first one was 17.7, kind of around 18. This one's 16 and a half. So remember, I'm in that two degrees. I'm fine. That's pretty good. So that mock drill that I have there is an excellent little drill. And what you do is you do that with every single club. And eventually what you're going to start to see is, you're gonna to start to see some consistencies. You'll start to feel some consistency when you start to hit the ball. Let's do that again. So we get in here like this, create my impact position. Lower body is gonna be slightly open. Upper body is, is slightly open. Hands are forward. Now I get that feel. Now let's make that swing. Now we hit that shot there, pretty good shot. Again, come on up here, because this is what's always fun, right? You don't have to be absolutely perfect, you just have to be in the neighborhood. Remember, we're going for 18. That time, I got to 19.2. Okay, not identical, but it's within that two degree parameter. What did I get out of my distance? 177 yards there. So I was 178 on the other one. I'm 177 on this one, right around my 175 to 180. When we start to get that kind of consistency, that's when store, uh, scores start to drop. That's when we start to really have some fun because we've got some predictability. And what I would tell you is when we go inside these numbers, what I want you to do is pay attention to that launch angle, a really important part of being successful. And as we start to get out on the golf course and we start to understand all these things, that's when all of a sudden we start being able to control the golf ball. We, we start to be able to have some predictability in our game and all that stuff adds up to more smiles, more fun, lower scores and that right there is proven it presented by title it's time for a transformational tip presented by morgan franklin width of stance when why how much all that stuff well we're covering it right now one of the things you want to pay attention to by the way is and let me just get a couple different clubs here so i've got a i've got a nine iron i've got a six iron i've got a three iron now as we start to get into shorter clubs and when i talk about shorter clubs i'm not talking about clubs that you hit shorter distances what i'm talking about is just the length okay so when i have a club that's a little bit shorter my nine iron is shorter than my six iron six iron is going to be shorter than the uh than the three iron so as i start to get into shorter length that's when i have a little bit more of a narrower stance why is that why do we want a narrower stance well what happens is when we start swinging a club like a nine iron or an eight iron, we, we bend over a little bit more. And that as we start to bend over a bit more, we lock our hips and the hips getting locked creates um, a lack of rotation or a lack of movement in the body. And to that same point, as I start widening my stance, that does the exact same thing. So as I start to widen stances, I restrict movement. And as I start to bend over a little bit more, that also restricts movement. So when I bend over more like this, it restricts movement. So what I need to do is I need to offset some bend. That's basically the way I try to explain it. So when I get into a, a nine iron, because I'm bending over a little bit more, I feel like I want a, a, a little bit of a narrower stance. Now, how narrow is too narrow? I'm just talking about a standard stock nine iron shot or a standard stock six iron shot or whatever. I'm not talking about hitting it high, hitting it low. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is just standard width of stance for a stock nine iron. So get into this nine iron position. And when I start talking about the width of the stance, I'm really looking at the width of heel to heel. Because many times what people do is they flare out toes. So if I took my toes and I flared them out like this, those look really, that looks like a fairly wide stance. But if I go square up to here and square up to there, now all of a sudden those look different in the width of the stance. So I always want you to pay attention to what's happening with the, the heels, heel to heel. And in effect, when I have a nine iron, what I want is I want the heels to be right around where the outside part of my hips are. I don't want it to be inside that. I want it to be right around there. So nine iron is gonna be in that spot right there. Now I can make my swing. It's more vertical. 
The body is going to be able to move correctly through the shot. And though I'm bent over more, because I have a narrower stance, I still get a really good range of motion. The hips are going to turn, the shoulders are going to turn, all that stuff is going to happen because of that. Now, as we start to get into this uh, six iron, now what we want to do is we want to get a little bit wider. And as we start to get a little bit wider with the six iron, remember my six iron, I'm not bending over quite as much. And as a result, I can widen up the stance because as I stand taller, I'm going to get that range of motion back. I can create a greater range of motion when my spine is aligned like this. When I start to get to a little bit of a wider stance, that's going to set up some restrictions. So as long as I have the upper body and the lower body working sort of in opposition, now I'm going to be able to make the motion that I want to be able to make. So with my six iron here, my stance is, and I'm going to say it's about a, a half a foot wider. In other words, if I went to the inside there and the inside there, now I'm about at nine iron. So I'm just adding about a half a footprint to both of those. Now I'm in my six iron. Now let's see how we do here with range of motion. And that was a really, really free swing. Not a lot of curve to that. And obviously I hit it farther than I wanted to. And then as I start to go to my three iron, once I get into the three iron spot, now I'm not quite at driver width but I'm definitely the widest that I'm going to be with, with an iron. And that's probably about a three wood width for me. So my three iron and three wood, those are about the same. And when you look there, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing the outside part of my hips to the inside part of the heels. So I go from where they're directly under to half and half to now the hips are inside of that, whether you flare out or you don't flare out. So regardless of, of how this works, first of all, when you start talking about width of stance, always look at the heels. Don't look at the toes. Always look at the heels. And then the second thing is know that as you start to have shorter length clubs, I want a little bit narrower stance. And as I get longer length clubs, I'm getting a little bit of a wider stance. And as that starts to happen for you, what you're going to find is you're going to find consistency in your, your contact because you're going to have consistency in your pre-swing. It all starts with the width of the stance. That's our transformational tip presented by Morgan Franklin. It's time for an FJ fix. One of my favorite drills to help you be consistent when we start out the year is to understand how to control balance. Now, why is balance so important? Balance is, is an important part of this because as my balance changes in the golf swing and as I fight for balance in the golf swing, I start to compromise my ability to strike the ball consistently. And what I mean by that is, is that, well, you gotta understand that the bottom of the arc is gonna happen right around the top of the spine, right around up here. Not back of the neck stuff, but right up here is basically where the bottom of the arc, more or less, I'm just more or less. And so as we start controlling that position, now I can get the ball to bottom, I mean the club to bottom out where I want it to bottom out. So when I'm hitting my six iron, I go, okay, I need this thing to travel 175 yards and I make my normal swing and then I go over here, come on up to the front here, come on up to the front with me, Gibbers. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hit that thing 175 yards. What did I get? I carried it 175 yards. That's because I understand where the bottom of the arc is. Now, the flamingo drill. Why does it help you with that? Because what I see happen more often than not is I see players struggle with balance in a rearward direction or away from the target. And when you start to let your body weight go back away from the target, now we start slowing up the club head. Now we start bottoming out too soon. We add loft when we get into the golf ball. We strike it out on the toe or in the heel or all kinds of different places and everything gets changed. Everything gets compromised. Ball speed gets compromised. The face angle gets compromised. The launch angle, both horizontally and vertically, those get everything gets compromised. And so what I want you to do when you get to going right in the spring, this is never a bad a, a, a bad drill to do. It's always great to do at the beginning of the year, but it's never a bad, to drill, bad drill to do at any time. What you're going to do is you're going to get set up. In effect, what you're doing is you're pointing your lead foot just in front of the golf ball, just like that. So it's just in front of the golf ball. 
Then what we're going to do is we establish balance. And now all I want you to do, we're going to hit this ball. And now when you hit it, what I want you to do is I want you to stay in that balance. I don't want you to fall off of your feet. Because what happens to us is when we fall off of balance from this drill, that's telling your upper body or your lower body they're not moving together. So if I make a poor swing and I go like this, now I've, I've recovered myself. I've had to use my, my trail foot as a kickstand so I don't fall over. When I make the right swing, the right drill, now all of a sudden I have the balance that I want and I'm able to swing through comfortably and confidently the bottom of the arc happens at the same time. So what you do is you teach yourself this drill. It will be hard at first. I'm not going to lie. And all drills should be difficult at first. I don't want you to get in and go, oh, this is too difficult. I want you to keep doing it. And what's going to happen to you is the way you're going to be able to keep your balance is you'll do it slowly. You might only hit your, like that one there, I only hit that about 145 yards. Well, we saw before my seven iron is going to go 175 yards. And I haven't done this drill in a while. And the reason why I want you to do this is because this is a drill that's going to help you understand how to sync up your swing. That was a really good one there. That one there went 165 yards. So in two swings, I was able to, to feel what's going on in my feet and understand how to generate the speed. And now, again, after you've done this for a little bit, now you go ahead and put that other foot down and you're going to feel like you've got so much more control over your balance that you'll be able to go even faster. So remember before my six iron, 175? I think I can get this thing to get up into the 190s. That's what I think. And still maintain balance. Caught that just a little bit fat. But that one there flew about 180 yards. As you can see, it went over the target out to about 184. As you start to manage your balance, that's when you start to get your consistency. And it's critical at the start of the season to understand, pay attention to the fundamentals. And one of the most fundamental parts of the golf swing is balance. It allows you to get consistent. It allows you to have predictable distance. It allows you to have a predictable apex and a predictable launch angle and all that stuff. When you start losing balance, that's when you get into trouble. And that is an FJ fit. It's time for a grip tip presented by Golf Pride. Understanding little drills to help you improve such an important part of the game. And for me, one of my favorite drills that I do, and I do this always at the beginning of the year because it helps me with sequence, it helps me with control in the club face, it helps me with balance, it helps me with tempo. I know, it's amazing. It does all these little different things. And it's a simple drill. It's called a pistol drill. Now, here's what you do. You put your hands on the club just the way you would normally do it. And then what I want you to do is I want you to lift up your thumb and your index finger. And a, a, a better line, a better look of the index finger is probably going to be in the down the line view, Givers, if you can. That's excellent. So that's what that's going to look like right there. You're going to have this index finger off and my thumb off the club just like that. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to hit some golf balls with that. So now I know you're going to feel extremely uncomfortable when you first do this. But what you're going to see is when we do this, how good the tempo is, how good my delivery is, my sequence. And what you're also going to feel is you're going to feel your lower body start before the upper body. That's what you're going to feel. And the reason why is, is that for the, for the most part, most people, the thumb and the index finger of the trail hand is the dominant part of their hands. And what destroys consistency in the game and predictability in your shots is when you start casting the club. This move right up here, big problem. And it also affects your tempo. And so what you do is you just take the thumb and the index finger off, just like that. And now all we're going to do is just hit balls. And this is the fun part about this drill is you can hit balls with it. In fact, I had a woman that I used to teach long, long, long time ago when I was working up in Vermont as an assistant. And I gave this drill to her and she hit the ball fabulously. And she'd go out on the golf course. And she'd, every time I go to the golf course, it doesn't make the transition. 
She said, can I play like this? I go, sure, you can play however you want. There's no rule that says you have to hold the club a certain way. And she went out there and she played like that all year. She won the club championship with that. There's, I'm telling you, this is a drill that's gonna help you with sequence. It's gonna help you with balance. It's gonna help you with consistency. It's gonna help you with your timing. What I don't want you to do is let your thumb and your index finger during the swing get over to the side like this. That is not gonna help you at all. I wanna make sure that when you're done with the swing, that your thumb and your index finger are still on the trail side of the shaft as you come through that shot. So let's just hit one more of these just like this. I'll show you one other reason why I like this drill too. So here we go. You can see that club just, just lags down in. It just lags down in to the hit. So. I want to show you one other, one other reason why I love this drill. Let's get it down the line view. And that is this. One of the things that we have a difficult time doing when we make a golf swing is controlling the position at the top. And so when, this, when we have this drill, because of how our hands are on the club at this point, I now have to let this club kind of sit into the palm of the trail hand. I'm not really supporting it underneath necessarily. I'm letting it sit in the palm of the hand. And what that's going to do is allow you to hit a draw. You can't believe it. You're going to think, I can't draw the ball like this. Well, you know what? You can hit a draw like this. Watch this work. And that starts out to the right-hand side, and then it just has about 250 RPMs to the left, and you can see that thing twist back to the target. And by the way, as that gets to the target, it also shows you, I didn't really lose any distance there. I had the distance. That ball flew in the air 173 yards. I tried to hit my, my six iron about 175. So that swing, that rhythm, that tempo, that freedom, that sequencing produces about the same distance. And what you're gonna find is, is that in some cases for you, it's gonna produce a greater distance. So don't be afraid to do this drill. And you can do it with everything. Wedges, driver, everything in between. Short game shots, it's fantastic. It's also gonna help you on your lead side, give you a little bit more strength. And that's a grip tip presented by Golf Pride.